Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new Gentech PC product showcase. In today's full length featured review, we'll be covering the brand new Asus Republic of Gamers Zephyrus Duo. So, we'll start things off with our unboxing as usual, so you can see what you get if you decide to order one of these for yourself. And definitely stay tuned because this is a very interesting dual screen laptop loaded with pretty much the best hardware you can get currently on the market. So as far as boxing and shipping, you're gonna get this unit double boxed. You can see we have an exterior box, pretty much plain flat black. And then inside of that is our internal box, also a flat black, very well protected with very thick foam coverings. All the extra protection here means that things will be safe and secure as it gets shipped to your home or work. And of course you can rest sound knowing that there's nothing too flashy here advertising that you have a brand new laptop sitting on your front porch. And then we have a secondary inside box and this is going to contain our accessories. So the main interior box, we'll go ahead and open that up first. We can take a first glance at the laptop. Considering this is a flagship model for ASUS, they went a little bit extra on the box and they give us a non-standard box. So you can see it opens from center and it has these angular wedges. So a very first glance at our laptop, you can see approximately the size of it. And of course we'll get into much more detail later on. So we have interior box with plastic wrap, our laptop with plastic wrap. So everything is very well protected. So here you are, we have our laptop completely opened up and we'll go ahead and dig into the box and see what other accessories that we have. So our secondary box that was in there is gonna contain our power adapter. You can see it's a little bit stylized with the rounded corners and it's a fairly good size. So we'll go ahead and zoom in on that so you can see the power rating. And this particular power adapter is pushing 280 watts to the laptop. And going back to our main box, we do have a secondary box embedded in there. And of course that's gonna have our warranty information and product information. It used to be where we'd find our drivers, but of course drivers are now usually downloaded online.
And in our small compartment here, we have a wrist rest. It's nice to have a few things thrown in, especially with flagship models, but of course the laptop itself is the real star of the show. And that's what we're gonna focus on next as we continue with the review. And right on the laptop, here's a few advertisements about what we're looking at. We have a two screen system here. That's what's called the Zephyrus Duo. 300 Hertz adaptive sync, we have very high-end thermal interface material being used, a large capacity battery, and 100 watt of Type-C charging available. So it's got a lot of these really neat features to it and high-end features. Back to what else was in the box, our power adapter again, 280 watts. And it's using a standard AC adapter plug. Now, as we open our laptop for the first time, we have a little cloth in here to protect the screen from scratches, but it's not a microfiber cloth for cleaning. You can see the dramatic difference in the keyboard placement because of the two screens. Our touchpad is off to the right hand side instead of in the center, and that means there's definitely going to be some adjustment with this new laptop. So let's start off with size and weight. You can see we have quarters for scale, and it's a pretty decent sized laptop, but not large about an inch and a quarter on the back side and a little bit shorter on the front side. So this is a wedge shaped laptop where it kind of tilts forward a little bit, which helps with ergonomics. As far as weight's concerned, five pounds and eight ounces for the laptop, which isn't really bad at all. And if you take your power adapter with you, you're a little bit over seven pounds for everything in total, closer to eight pounds. So here we are with our unit powered on for the first time. And you can see the really cool features about this laptop, the dual screens. So we have a very thin bezel screen on the main screen. And again, 300 Hertz refresh rate, which is amazingly fast for gamers. It's using the newest Ryzen 9 CPU. This is the best CPU you can get on a laptop. And then you got the secondary screen down below. And this is a touch sensitive screen. So you can actually use it as an interface. A couple of the markets they're trying to target here are going to be content creators or streamers because you can use this as a heads up display and interact with it directly. So down below, as far as our keyboard, this is a chiclet style low profile keyboard with per key RGB backlighting. So you can customize the keys and how they look. We have the touch pad on the right hand side with separated left and right clicks, which is nice. They're not integrated to accommodate everything in one little space. Of course, your touchpad doubles as your number pad. And for those who don't use the standard number keys above the keyboard, you will have to toggle the modes on that. So let's go ahead and take a quick tour around the outside edges and look at our interfaces for connectivity. Over on the left hand side, we have a card reader, the power port for charging and running off of mains power and a 3.5 millimeter combo jack for headphones, microphone, or a headset. And you can see how things close when you open and close it. It hinges the smaller screen into the laptop body. And we do have interfaces here on the rear. Here in the center rear, we have the RJ45 for local network connectivity, a USB port, and our full-size HDMI output. And lastly, on the right hand side, we have two more standard USB ports and then one of the newer type C USB ports. So as far as interfaces for connectivity, we are pretty good on USB, but we definitely have less display outputs than usual. And that's most likely because we're using one of those internally for the second screen. So before we start taking a deeper dive, here's one last look at the system. We'll kind of give you a profile view. So 
So even though this laptop comes equipped right now with the best video card and CPU you can get, of course, most likely you're getting this laptop because of the dual screen feature. So here's a little bit of coverage on that feature. Hopefully it's not just a gimmick and it's something actually useful. And one of the ways they've incorporated it being useful is not just pre-programmed elements, but you can use pretty much any window from the Windows environment and dock it into the second screen. This means pretty much any control interface that you'd have on your laptop that you would normally click with your mouse, you can now dock it on the secondary screen and interact with it by touch. So here we'll take a look at some of the neat features that are on here. This is going to be one of our control panel interfaces. So if you're a content creator, streamer, and you're working on a mobile platform, it's really easy to see how this could be super useful. You can dock all of your different streaming settings, start, stop, scenes, all of that down on that second screen, and still keep your main workflow, whatever you're streaming on the main screen without having to minimize it or have secondary monitors. And the fact that it's touch interface means you don't even have to move your mouse away from what you're doing. So it's nice to see that the secondary screen is going to be a lot more than just a gimmick. It's actually going to be a very useful tool if used appropriately. So probably one of the largest challenges you'll face if you own this laptop is getting used to the unusual keyboard placement. Since we're using all of that real estate for the second screen, the keyboard's right at the lip, which means you pretty much have to use the included wrist rest or use your own if you're someone who has to have your hands sitting down while you type. And then when you go to reach down for the touchpad, it's not going to be right below the space bar. It's over to the right hand side. So that's going to take some getting used to. It might mean that this laptop is a great candidate for an external mouse. Ultimately though, you'll get used to it if this is something you use on a regular basis and it shouldn't be a big deal. So now let's jump over into our device manager and look at some of the great hardware that's included in this laptop. You can see that we have the GeForce RTX 3070, and you can get this in the 3080 as well. This is the Max P edition, which is the Max Power, not the Max Q edition, so you get the full performance. Ryzen 9 5900HX, which is the laptop equivalent of the 5900X from the desktop side, which is a super, super high-end, high-powered CPU. Here's going to be some information on our monitor. And if we go into our display properties, you can see we do have two displays. 1920 by 1080p is our resolution. And the current refresh rate right now is set for 60 hertz, although the 1080p panel does support 300 hertz. And you can get the 4K panel with a 120 hertz refresh rate. So here is a deeper dive into CPU-Z and GPU-Z so you can get the full information on the processor and graphics card. And again, when we're looking at the CPU-Z and GPU-Z information, keep in mind that this is the RTX 3070 Max-P edition, which is the maximum power and you do have the option for the 3080 as well. And while we're here, we're going to take a look at our current temperatures. These are the baselines before we move into the next part of our review where we do our benchmarks. So we don't have the per core temperatures, but we have a package temperature of 52 degrees Celsius for the CPU. And down below, when it comes to the GPU, we're currently at 49 degrees Celsius. And 
And of course we have that secondary screen with a lot of the built-in heads up display information. So we can change things from here, such as our fan configuration. And we can look at the current frequency and temperature of the CPU and GPU from here as well. And noise baselines, right now the system at idle, you can see the sound levels are nice and low. And we'll come back when we have the system under load with benchmarks and we'll see how that changes. And one more baseline for us to collect here is gonna be the outside temperatures using our infrared camera. Now normally where the hands would sit is a cooler area, but there really is no place for your hands to sit on this laptop. So the temperatures of the surface don't matter too much. So since surface temperatures are not too much of an issue, the infrared camera is good for seeing if the heat is being exhausted out of the system. And of course, we'll verify that when we go look at the post benchmark scores as far as the internal temperatures. So here's a fairly large central exhaust. You can see it is getting rid of a lot of the heat. You can see where the table has been heating up as well. So now we've started 3D Mark Firestrike and down below we can look at the current heads up display. We have it on turbo mode right now. And we'll go check out our noise levels. You can see in turbo mode, the fans are going to be really spooled up and that has definitely increased our noise output. And as we go back to look at the surface temperatures, they haven't really changed too much. and our major exhaust areas. So 3D Mark Firestrike has finished up with a score of 23,737, which is one of the highest scores we've had in a long time. And of course, with the GPU being the same as the other models, we can attribute those extra points towards the better CPU. Now back to temperatures, the CPU package got to 89 degrees Celsius, which is actually really great. That's not too hot at all. Now if we go take a look at our GPU, the highest temperatures we got on the 3070 was 78 degrees Celsius, which is also a very excellent temperature. And we'll run our Cinebench R15 benchmark as well for you. So 152 frames per second for OpenGL and 2,344 Cinebench points for the CPU. You can see that pretty handedly beat the Intel scores. And here's a demo of the speaker system.
So now it's time for us to move along to our final segment of the review, which is going to be the system disassembly. You can see the air intake cutouts on the bottom panel. And ASUS does advertise this as being an easy to upgrade and easy to access system. So there are a lot of screws to remove, so not too sure where they get the easy to access part of it. But as we remove our bottom panel, we'll see how easy it is to upgrade. So here's our first look at the inside and we can see a very large internal battery, which is great. This is one of our SSDs. One of our wireless cards. And here's an interesting design. There's an open slot for another SSD that would go over the top of that wireless card. The large cooling solution, very thick heat pipes, and it's a two fan solution. And with further disassembly, we've removed our battery. The system RAM, which is currently using one, so there is an option to add a second one. Here is our CPU and GPU on the motherboard. And that's the high-end thermal interface compound that they were talking about. So while there were a lot of screws to remove to get the bottom panel off, it is easy to upgrade if you wanted to add any extra RAM or a second SSD. And as far as the high-end thermal interface material, it looks like they used that on the CPU, but the GPU is using a more traditional thermal paste. And that actually completes our disassembly and also the review for the ASUS Republic of Gamers Zephyrus Duo. So we hope that you were able to enjoy the video and found it both entertaining and educational. If you were interested in the system and you'd like to learn more, the best place to go is into the video description and check out the product page link. There you can find the current pricing and availability and all the full system specs. If our video didn't answer a question you might have had and you'd like to ask that question, feel free to go down into the comment section and ask that question down below so we can answer for you and everybody else. And never fear, if you have any one-on-one -on -one questions you need to ask us, then feel free to reach out to us by phone or email and we'll be more than happy to help you out. So we just want to remind everybody, this was Gen Tech PC, and we'll see you next time.